What's up YouTube, Dar here from Zephyr War Games, and today I am bringing you an update to Synchro Dark Worlds. That's right, so I did a Synchro Dark World profile ages ago, now we've got loads of new support for the Synchro side of it, and we've got easier ways and more consistent ways of being able to get into Fabled Raven, which is our main tune-up for the deck. So, with all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more upcoming content. If you get this video above 50 likes in the first 24 hours, I will bring you more Dark World content, and it could even be more test hands, more combos, or just more updated versions. With all of that out of the way, let's dive headfirst into the profile and show you exactly what we've got. So, diving in with the monsters first again, lineup is pretty much always the same, no matter what version of Dark World you are playing, which means you are going to be playing Triple Rainbow, and until we get Colorus, which is yet still to be confirmed when we're going to get it, um, we're still going to be rocking three of the new Rainbow and none of the original Rainbow as yet. We are then playing, of course, Triple Genta uh, alongside Triple Snow and Double Greffa. All of that is pretty straightforward and simple. Now, the new change to the deck, we are actually going to be playing 2 Lucian. And the reason we're going to be playing 2 Lucian is there's a very, very nice combo where you end up pretty much going through your 2 Lucian and 2 Ceruli while also being able to set up a Fabled Raven play to your board. So the idea is that you're able to get to Fabled Raven, you're able to get a second Fabled Raven, and you're constantly being able to pull your tuners out directly from the deck, which is really, really nice. And throughout that line of play as well, you're also able to continue on in order to set up Synchro plays that can give you a nice little Omni Negate, giving a monster on your board, leaving the monster on your opponent's board so it means they cannot imperm you, evenly you, lightning storm you without being able to get rid of it first. And on top of that, if it wasn't enough, you're also then able to still continue the hand loop because you're able to bounce the Cerulees back to your hand and go again. We are playing the one silver and the one beige. Now the reason I've put these together is these are the two cards that we are playing alongside the Lucian that when they're discarded, they summon themselves out. Now the reason I've gone with one beige, one silver, and then two of the Lucian is technically um, silver is probably your best one because literally if you just go normal summon Fabled Raven, you use Fabled Raven's effect to discard the silver, straight away that's a Synchro level 8. And the best thing about Synchro level 8 right now is you can go into Axel Stardust, Axel Stardust then equals you a Barone. So unless they stop that Fabled Raven, which is going to be something that's really, really weird for your opponent to imperm a Fabled Raven and still leave you with four cards to play with, is absolutely insane. When you look at the Lucian, the whole idea behind Lucian is you ideally want to be discarding it off of your own effects or off of the Ceruli in order to get it to the board and get an additional theme from the board, but there will be times when you can discard it as well. Another option if you wanted to is you can cut Lucian down to one and then you can go with one gold as well, because then gold or silver still get you the same synchro level eight leading into a Baron combo. So when you kind of think about it, if you've got like three dangers in hand and a Genta, and then you've got your ability, uh, sorry, you've got a Fabled Raven, a Silver, and then three dangers or a route to dangers and Gentas and everything like that, and you want to protect from the Biru, you want to protect from Droll, everything like that, then straight away, just by going normal summon Fabled Raven, discard a Silver, discard a Gold, gets you straight into Axel. Axel then gives you an unaffected Barone, and that is absolutely insane. Carrying on as well, we are then still playing the one Diabolic card. I still really like this card, you don't have to play it at all, but the idea is that you've still got more ways of triggering this, whether it be off of a Danger, whether it be off a Fabled Raven, just getting this to the graveyard, getting yourself a free level 8 to the board. Even if your opponent does negate these um, Fabled Raven and it can't boost its level anymore, what you've got to remember is Fable Ravens are soft once per turn. So you've got loads of different ways to get your secondary copy in the form of Lucian getting it from the deck for you. You've also got the ability to revive it off of a Daguerres if you need to, and you've got the ability to revive it off of a Muckcracker. And the best thing about that is there's some very, very cool fiends in the extra decks at the Synchros that will give you that extra step in order to kind of combat your opponent even when you are fiend locked. Speaking of which, we are playing two Fabled Raven. Now you could play three if you wanted to, but the reason I've gone with two in this one is just because of the Lucian plays. Now it's very, very consistent to be able to get to a Ceruli to also be able to get to a Lucian. So for example, for something like that, if you were to go with like Genta into the Dark World combo and you open up a Rainbow and you open up a Snow, your Snow gets you to your Ceruli, your Rainbow gets you to your Lucian, you're good to rock and roll already nice and early, and that's gonna be able to get you your Fabled Raven. Fabled Raven, before it even activates its effect, can get into a Synchro level eight, and then you can protect your board from that point on. I'm still then playing two Zalamander Catalyzers, and the reason that Zalamander is actually really good in this version is because Zalamander can provide you that missing level that you may or may not need. Now, of course, it can naturally be a level four, but it can also be able to trigger to get you another level five to the board should you need to. So, for example, if you opened up Raven plus Zal uh, Zalamander and you opened up 
silver and your opponent was to imperm your raven, you still then have the ability of going salamander, discarding silver, summon salamander itself and then summon back silver. You've then got your ability to build up the board on there. And if you wanted to play Psychic and Punisher, you could very well do in your extra deck. There's so many different options. But the idea is that salamander can become a level four, it can be a level eight. And what I'm saying by that, so there's no confusion, is for the pure fact that even if it's discard something like a uh, gold or a rainbow, you're searching out the next level you need. If you're discarding a Lucian, if you're discarding a Ceruli, if you're discarding a uh, Silver, you're getting that level on the board and able to build up even further. Moving on to the dangers, now we're still playing the dangers, but the idea behind these is the ones that I've selected are all ones that are going to give me a specific effect if they if I do decide to discard these off of the back of Raven. So obviously with Mothman, it's a great one to reveal. It's not that bad one to actually be discarded because you both players get to draw and discard. Now obviously it's not something you're going to want to discard off of the back of your Raven unless you absolutely have to to increase its level. That is entirely up to you. You then got Nessie, which is one of the ones where if I don't have another discard option, I can discard the Nessie, give me out another danger, and I'm regaining my resource that I'm discarding off of the Fabled Raven. But again, ultimately, it's just one of the ones that is a free reveal if it summons, and then I can normal summon Raven and discard. I've still got the ability to go directly into a Synchro level 10, meaning that I get to a Baron, even though it's not protected, it still gives me a very nice Omni Negate to protect from the Beerus, Veilers, Drolls, you name it. You then got Chubacabra that if I wanted to discard it directly off of a Fabled Raven can allow me to revive a level that I wanted to. So a level four, a level seven, or a level three in the form of Jackalope. And Jackalope is just there to be discarded to then go, okay, right, well, I can then use Fabled Raven, discard Jackalope, Jackalope, summon out Nessie straight away, I got my Synchro level 10. Uh, and then of course the honorary kind of danger is the form of Blackwing Zephros the Elite. Now for those of you that are unaware how this works is, again, this is one of the ones that rather than leaving it to um, luck as to whether you reveal it off of a danger or not, you can actually discard this off of your, um, discard this off of your Fabled Raven. Then gives you the ability to bring back a danger to the hand, reveal the danger, extend, draw, you name it. But the whole idea of a Zephyrus's Lee is when it's in the graveyard, it allows you to target one of your dangers, ideally, returns it to the hand, and then you've got another ability to reveal and possibly draw, summon, and you name it. The last monster that we are playing is Triple Fenrir. Now you don't have to play this. What's really, really good about this is again, this plus Raven is a direct synchro level 10. Now, the idea is you special summon out your Fenrir, Fenrir searches out another copy of itself, and then you get the ability of normal summon Raven, Raven discards and off you go. So Ray will discards the spare Fenrir you've just searched, you synchro into a Baron level 10, you then still maintain your hand advantage and you still have those free cards if you've gone first to continue your plays. So that could be a Genta play, that could be a Rainbow play, that can be all the way into a Snow play as well. It's not, I'm not saying that you play these to protect yourself from drawing that, I'm just saying these are little added additions that give you a little bit more that you might want or might not want. If you wanted to cut Fenrir, you can very easily do. There's a lot of flexibility in the deck depending if you're like, right, okay, I wanna play pure danger, I don't want to mess about with anything else, or I want to be a bit experimental, I want to see what I can get around with. Fenris is really good right now because I think they're like £13 for an Ultra if you look in the right place. Moving on to the spells, so I've gone with the Triple Tactics engine, so we've got two to Frost and one Talents, especially with the fact that the idea behind this is that you're going to give your opponent Ceruli, so it's very rare that you resolve this turn one and set the card, it's more consistently you're going to resolve this and then add the card to the hand, so that can give me a Talents to let me look at my opponent's hand, get rid of a powerful card they might need to keep, or I can be going directly into the powerful play, powerful play of Dark Corridor. So this is just another way of getting to another, a secondary Ceruli, to get into a Lucian, to get into a Snow, Rainbow, you name it. Uh, finally got my second copy. It's really nice if you open it, and if you open it and Triple Tactics Frost, and you're able to resolve Corridor and then resolve Frost, your other targets for Frost is very directly going to Talents, which is really nice. You can also go to Card Destruction, which in this deck like this is in invaluable. Like if you open up five dangers, and you go, okay, cool, or four dangers, Card Destruction, boom, go, start again. And then in that, you draw a Fabled Raven. You've still got all of the Dark World cards that are gonna trigger to either search you more hand resource or be able to sum themselves back and you name it. And then of course we've got the one archives, the two gates and the one accession. Now someone did make a very valuable point in the sense that you could be playing Foolish Barrel goods if you wanted to and the idea would be is you Foolish Barrel the accession and then you can use accession's effect to target the discard that you want to to bring it back to the hand. Personally I'm not a fan of that just for the pure fact that I like to add the accession to the hand then activate the accession to fusion summon and then use this effect again to bring it back meaning that I can fusion summon during my opponent's turn. It should be consistent enough to get this to the hand off of the back of something like snow, off of the back of uh, just being able to kind of get to it 
through archives, through additional draw cards, you name it, especially when you've got technically five ways to get to snow, and that's before you start considering the other direct routes to get to your dark worlds as well. So that's it for the main deck. Uh, moving on to the extra deck, which is pretty much where the adaption comes. This is where all the synchros start to take shape. This is where all the synchros um, show you the spicy options that you have, depending on the build you're trying to go for. So we'll start off with probably the best synchro for the deck. And the reason I say this is it's pure fact that it is a fiend, so it doesn't care about the lock. And on top of that, it's also very, very good to be able to discard as effect for during your opponent's turn, which is really, really important. And that's Grozer. So what Grozer does is it is during the, your opponent's main phase, quick effect, you can target an effect monster on the field, discard one monster, and if you do, negate that monster's effects until the end of this turn. Now, keep in mind, it's target an effect monster as cost, you discard as effect, and you negate until the end of this turn, meaning that it will allow you to trigger one of your dark worlds during your opponent's turn. On top of that as well, is once per turn, if a fiend monster or monsters is sent from your hand to the graveyard, except during a damage step, you can apply one of the following effects until the end of this turn. This card cannot be destroyed by battle, it cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects, or your opponent cannot target this card with card effects. So it's a very nice 28, 2800 beater, 2800 defender, and it gives you the ability to trigger your dark worlds, possibly even trigger dangers if you wanted to. You could spice it up and have a Bigfoot in the hand, and then you could discard the Bigfoot and off you go from there as well. Then the next one that is actually really kind of cool for the deck is the Chaos Archfiend. The reason this is cool for the deck is it requires a light tuner, which is exactly what Fabled Raven is, and then it requires one non-tuner dark monsters, which is of course all of your other dark worlds. If any card or cards has been banished this turn, this card gains 2,000 attack, which is very easy by going through your Genta combo, not to mention your session play as well. This card can also attack all monsters your opponent currently controls, once each, and you banish any monster destroyed by battle with this card. If this card is in its own control, leaves the field because of an opponent's card, you get to special summon a Chaos Synchro monster from your extra deck, except itself. Now we're not actually playing any other Chaos Synchro deck, uh, Chaos Synchro monsters apart from Chaos Angel. So that is another one that you could look into just cheesing out of the back of this. But the idea is this is going to be your game winner and game killer. You're going to be summoning it when it's 4500. It's going to be able to clear all of your opponent's monsters. And the best thing about it is it's Fiend as well. So if you wanted to play the Zalamander play, you could do that as well. Completely clear your opponent's board. But this is going to be your synchro alternative to the Zalamander so that you make something like Muckcracker and you're like, right, okay, I've got a level six on the board. I just need to be able to get my level two Fabled Raven back. So you're going to use Muckcracker's effect. You're going to revive the Fabled Raven. You're going to sync as you need to to get into the Chaos Archfiend. The Chaos Archfiend is going to go, okay, cool, 4500, clear, 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 clear. Muckcracker in for the final damage that it needs. Uh, and then we've got Cyphering Lord Omega. It's like the best synchro to help you hand loop, which is exactly what this deck wants to do going first. So it's like one of the first synchros you can go for to loop it around. You can also then put the Gentas back into the graveyard and the Greffers back into the graveyard if you've banished, banished them off of a session or off of their own effects. Then of course we've got the Borrowed Savage Dragon, completely up to you, you don't have to play this. You've got loads of different options, you can go less on the Synchro options if you want to. You can go for Scarlight, I'm not playing Saruja in this build because it is focused more on the Synchros, but it's just kind of showing you all the different options that you do have. Uh, Axel into Stardust, now the reason this is quite important to go Axel into Stardust is because it will make you or allow you to make the Barone unaffected by your opponent's activated effects, which is really, really important. Now, I know you can do that through Chaos Angel as well, but it gives you one of them abilities that you get the, the opportunity to go, okay, cool, before my fifth summon, Axel into Stardust, complete the resolution, being able to sync my Stardust with the uh, Fabled Raven that I've brought back from the graveyard with your Stardust Dragon because it is a level two. Keep in mind as well that technically, if you were to adapt the level of Fabled Raven, you would have to change the play you're going for, which is why you could look at something like a Crimson Dragon if you wanted to, or a Psychic End Punisher. Not that you need to protect so I can get and punish her as much, um, but it was a little bit more difficult to adapt your life points in the right way. Uh, so Chaos Dragon would be your good option. But it's one of the ones where if you haven't got any more to discard, and you, for example, you've gone uh, Fabled Raven, like I said at the start, discard Silver, summon Silver back, they've got a level eight Synchro on the board, straight away going to Axel. Axel brings back the Fabled. Fabled then goes straight into the Baron de Fleur, which gives you that Omni Negate and protection that you need from the two cards. So for our first level 10, we're going into Ballon de Fleur. Now, obviously this one is insane. This is your Omni Negate, you get it as early. It can also help you clear boards off as well going second. So if your opponent doesn't stop your revival of, if they're like, oh, you know what? I'm not really too fussed about this. Like, what am I gonna fear about Fabled Raven discarding the silver? I'll let that go. And you go, okay, cool, Axel. And they're like, where's this going? And then they see the ability to go into Barone. They have to stop the Axel reviving from the graveyard. But then you can still chain the Axel and still get a Stardust to the board anyway. So you're still able to kind of play around in the gate. It's very tricky for them to deal with. And then you set yourself up with a Barone. 
Now, depending on if you play it or not, it's entirely up to you, but if you have access to Crimson Dragon, this is where you can then also play Bestial Dispatter. So, you've got the ability to adapt levels as you see fit, and that's how it's very easy to get into Crimson Dragon. So being able to get into Crimson Dragon will allow you to target the Baron and then cheese out the Bestial Dispatter, or you need to adapt your deck or play with a Bestial in the main deck. Still very easily done, because you can go Fabled Raven, discard two. That also sets up your Bestial play as well, because the Bestial then has a dark target in the graveyard. Banish it, and go hard summon into uh, Bestial Dispatter, and the Dispatter can then bring back one of the cards you've banished off of the back of your Bestial as well. So like your Magnamu, or of course your Druid Swarm. So it does give you a lot of different options, which is really, really kind of cool as well. Um, but because I'm not playing Crimson Dragon, I'm also not playing the Bestial Dispatter, but these are just kind of an options that you can look at if you've got access to them, especially when they're quite hype right now with all the Synchro decks and versions running around. Another card that I haven't mentioned is Revolution Synchron, and the reason that I haven't put this in here yet is I haven't really made the decision on how I'd want to implement it. Yes, it's going to be great to go into an Axel, but then there's nothing in the graveyard for it to bring back. So it is a little bit more specific on the type of monsters you're trying to make. For your other Synchro level 10, Chaos Angel, and the reason Chaos Angel is so good is because you don't need the Fabled Raven. If you do have the ability to make this with Fabled Raven and then the subsequent other monsters, so something like Greffa, then it's insanely powerful because it protects all of your Synchros from battle and from card effects as well. But if you don't have the Fabled Raven, you can still just make it using only Darks, and monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle, which means they are not punting over any of your monsters. Link monsters, Synchro monsters, or even your normal effect monsters, which is absolutely amazing. Then of course for the fusions, we do have two of the Greffa Dragon Overlord of the Dark World. Pretty straightforward and simple on this one. Again, adapt it as you see fit, play it as ever you see as well. Then moving on to the synchros, uh, sorry, the XYZ. So the one XYZ, we've got the one Daguerres, and then of course you do have the one Baguska, because there will be those times when unfortunately your opponent will draw you, they will stop you, they will shift you, and you still need to find a way in order to get to a control sense of the board, and Baguska is one of the best options for that. Then for the Link Monsters, we've got two Link 2s in the form of Cross Sheep and the Akashic Magician. So if the Akashic is in here in order to bounce back the Ceruli and then go again the next turn. So constantly keep looping that Ceruli in the same turn and going from there. And then your Cross Sheep, not only do you put a Fusion Monster to it to revive one from the graveyard, but also having a Synchro Monster to it as well gives you the additional effect that all monsters you control gain an additional 700 attack. So then Cross Sheep obviously gives you the ability when it points to a Synchro Monster that all monsters you control gain that 700 attack. So on top of that, you're also going to have Gate of the Dark World boosting all your Fiends, Archives boosting all your Dark Worlds, and just straight away, all of your monsters before you know it become insane boss monsters. And then of course, we're playing the one at Zelantis and the one Appalooza. Now again, your link kind of area or your link numbers can all be adapted and changed as you see fit. If you're like, okay, cool, I really want to play IP instead of the um, Zelantis and I want to play Underworld because a lot of people don't expect it and being able to link off my opponent's towers is incredibly invaluable, then that is an option you can go down as well. It really does depend on the type of build you want to play, but like I said, because I wanted to make this as synchro focused as I possibly could, that's the reason that I kind of wanted to show off more of the synchro options. So if you're looking to build this deck and you're like, oh cool, I really want to know what type of synchro options I have for the deck, well now you know. Now it's not just limited to these cards that I'm showing you in front of you. Um, I have shown you 16 cards, so it is entirely up to you on how you want to adapt it, but I wanted to show you mainly the synchro options that you can kind of look forward to and the synchro options that you can play. Like I've shown you. You've got your boss monster in Archfiend, you've got your um, plays in the Excel play, you've got your defender in Savage, which can be very, very good, but also very specific because it means you have to go for your Cross Sheep or your Akashic first. And then the final one, of course, is the Zelantis, which is your other link option. So the final kind of extra deck of this one is these six synchros here, followed up by your Chaos Angel and your Baron. And then, of course, you've got your two fusions, your Graffa Dragon, your one Cross Sheep, your one Akashic. You want Appalooza, so very defensive on the link lineup. And then, of course, you've got your defenders and your extenders in the XYZs. So you can see that all of your aggression and most of your defense is coming for your synchros and, of course, your fusion monster. So it really does come down to what type of options you want to play. Um, other options you can also look into, of course, is like Saruja that we've mentioned before. You've got Crimson Blader. You've got Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend if you need to go into burn damage. You can pretty much go through any of the Synchro lineups you want. If you can find better Fiend ones, then that's great, which is where all the Chaos Monsters come in because they're being Fiends naturally. It means you're not going to hard lock yourself into any of, um, like, you're not afraid to use Muckcracker to bring back your Fabled Raven Tuner and then go again. 
So that's it for the profile. I hope I've shown you a couple of different options. I hope I've kind of shown you how the deck can function as a synchro based option. It is something that's a little bit more unique, a little bit different. It's not exactly the strongest version around, but it's definitely one of these versions that when you play it this way, a lot of your opponent is going to go, what the heck have I just seen? I'm expecting to get hand looped and he's like, yeah, I'm going to hand loop you and they're going to bring out some synchro boss monsters as well. And you're not going to know what's hit you. It's a very, very fun deck. Like I said, I feel personally the best version of Dark Worlds is the one that I built with like Ghost Second Mind. So stuff like uh, Lava Golems. Uh, heck, you could even consider stuff like the Fairy Tale Luna as well. There are still a lot of cards in the meta you need to play around, so adapt the deck according to your local environment. If your local environment is all cash tiers, then you need to really, really think that you need to out that Rise Heart before you can do anything. If a lot of your locals is dropping D-Shifter, then your focus is going to be able to try and get to a Baguska. If a lot of your locals are playing Draw and Lock Bird, you need to be able to set up and negate before you get to that ability where they can Draw and Lock you, and then you're able to build off the back of it. So take this list, adapt it as you see fit. If you're like, oh, I really like how the synchros work. I like the fact that I can get to a Barone very early before I even go down the draw route. This is one way to do it. If you want to bump up your Fabled Raven to free, by all means, you can do it as well. That's the best thing about this day is there is a lot of flexibility, a lot of change, a lot of adaption, which is really, really cool and fun. For now, thank you so much for watching. Do it to like, comment, subscribe, share. Like I said at the start of the video, if you do get the video above 50 likes in the first 24 hours, I will bring you more Dark World content throughout the week as well. For now, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share. And as absolutely always, stay safe. And of course, happy dueling.